Hello, my name is Marty McGee Bennett, and I'm the person that invented Camelot Dynamics. For the past over 35 years, I've been traveling around the world teaching people how to handle and train their llamas and alpacas, and I will tell you the single most important thing is to have a halter that fits. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a uh, overview about how the Zephyr halter, which is the one that I designed, uh, got started, how it, why it works so much differently and better and fits so much differently and better than every other halter out there. So um, the first thing to know is that any halter is made basically of two loops, one loop that goes around the nose and another loop that goes around the head and then there's a short piece that connects the two. Uh, and that my halter is no different. Um, if you uh, if you look here, there are um, a, a number of different pieces to the halter that I'm going to be talking about. So I'm just going to tell you um, what the names are so that you'll understand um, which part of the halter I'm talking about. This is the nose band. It's composed of the upper part of the nose band and the lower part of the nose band. There's an, this loop that goes around the head. Loop B is composed of the crown piece that goes around the back of the neck and the throat latch, which is the part that meets the jawbone. Okay, that's really a, a really important part. And this little short piece that, combine, that connects those two loops, I call the cheek piece. Okay, so those are the parts of the halter. So now let's talk about camelid anatomy because it really impacts uh, how a halter has to be designed in order to be both safe and comfortable. So our animal, first of all, is a ruminant, modified ruminant, if you want to be uh, completely correct. They, um, they either are grazing or ruminating almost their entire waking hours. So that means that their jaw is going back and forth a lot. It means that they need a lot of room, if they're wearing a halter while that's going on, to be able to move their jaw back and forth. The other thing that I want you to look at is that they, they don't have a very long nose bone. And this little divot complicates things a little bit more even. This part of the, of the skull is not very thick. It doesn't get thick really and substantial until just in front of the eyes. And this, uh, if the um, animal were alive, would be cartilage, which means it would, could compress. So if you look at this, um, halter from the side, you can see that if you put a nose band on here and it slides forward, it's going to slide off of bone onto cartilage. If you start to use it and the animal starts jumping around, you're going to end up compressing the cartilage, which is going to compromise their airway. And um, at the same time that the animal needs more air because they're jumping around in a panic, they're getting less because their airway is compromised. Okay, so we have a couple of different issues. We need to design a halter that allows the animal to have some movement in their jaw, and we need to design a halter so that it will stay up on firm bone no matter what. So most halters out there are designed inexpensively, and uh, the way that you do that is that you have two rings, two loops, uh, without any adjustment in the nose band. And most people, when they get one of these halters, they put it on like a ring on a cone, and then they will buckle the crown piece around the, um, the back of the head. Now I've got, I, I've got a little mark here, or two little marks here on the, on the skull, and where I want the, the throat latch, remember that's the, the bottom part of the loop that goes around the head, I want that on the biggest firmest part of the jaw, because that gives the animal more mobility uh, to be able to chew, to have movement in the jaw. And the other thing I want is for this nose band to be on bone. Now in this case, you could push this, this halter on and tighten down that, um, that crown piece and keep it up on the bone, but the animal would have absolutely no room in their jaw. And in fact, if you think about it, if you're putting the halter on the animal like a ring on a cone, then, and you tighten it up, it's going to tie their mouth shut. And the only way to give them additional room in their, um, in their, um, to chew is to loosen the crown piece. And then what happens is the halter can slide forward and off the bone. And now you've got the other problem. 
So, halters that are sized by the front loop, the loop that goes around the nose, are not going to work. The only place that you can reasonably fit the halter is this back loop that goes around the back, behind the ears, and at the back of the jaw. So let's have a look at that. All right, so I'm gonna put a Zephyr halter on this skull, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on until the throat latch, remember that piece, until that stops the halter from going too far back. And it will end up meeting the jaw right here at the largest, thickest part of the jaw. And you'll notice that the nose band is up on firm bone. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tighten that crown piece so that that nose band will stay there so that it's on that bone and it won't move. And that is governed by how tight the crown piece is. It still leaves all kinds of room in that nose band for the animal to, to be able to move their jaw back and forth, to, to ruminate, to graze, to yawn, to drink, okay? And you remember if you put it on like a ring on a cone until it stops, you are tying the mouth shut. So, uh, these halters are made of nylon. They stretch 33% or can stretch up to 33%. So once you put your halter on, you're going to want to tighten it up or check it after about 10 minutes once it warms up and stretches out a little bit. So the, the, remember now, the Zephyr halter is sized by the loop that goes around the head and the jaw, around the back behind the ears and the jaw, not by the nose band. And I have lots and lots of choices in the nose band to make it bigger or smaller, but the part that's actually fitting the animal is the part that meets the jaw and is behind the ears. So now I have one other thing I wanna share with you about halter fit, and that is it is possible, if you get a Zephyr halter, to get one that's too big, and there's a problem there too. If you put the, if you put the halter on, let me unbuckle this one. If you put the halter on, and the throat latch, if the halter is too big, and you put the halter on, and the throat latch goes all the way past the curve of that jawbone, and is um, on soft tissue, and you tighten it up, then what you're doing is you're pushing on soft tissue underneath the, you know, behind the jawbone. And that will obviously compromise the airway too and um, cause the animal to feel very frightened. So that's why when you put a halter on, the very first thing you wanna do is to check where the throat latch meets the jawbone. That's the very first thing that you need to check. So these are all pictures of halters that don't fit. And I think after my explanation, you can tell what's wrong with them. They're not on the nose bone uh, at all. They're uh, compressing the cartilage. Uh, in this case, um, same thing. If it were being used, it would be pulling down on the cartilage. Um, but these are halters that are going to make, um, they were taken at a shearing and they're going to make things even harder for these animals. These are pictures I took from the internet and they are halters that are listed for sale. They do not fit and they're very poorly designed. This one is way far forward on the bone and way, way, way too tight. Here's another one that the nose band might be on bone, but it's way too tight. So up now we're looking at llama halters. These are too far forward, it looks like they're not on the jaw and the back, and the proportions are just not correct for the head. The same with this one. This is very tight on the nose, and it looks like it's off of the jawbone. This one is on the jawbone, but it's so far forward on the nose and so tight that the animal would have a very difficult time chewing. Um, it's, this is the same with this one. It's, uh, it's, it's too far forward on the jawbone and too far forward on the nose band. It just doesn't fit. 
Now this is interesting because this one is one of my halters, it's a Zephyr halter, but the person has chosen a, a size that's too big for this animal and has adjusted it. When there's a whole bunch of stuff hanging off, it, uh, it's too big. I have four sizes for alpacas and four for llamas. For al alpacas, it's extra small, small, medium, and large. And um, generally speaking, most adults are gonna be either in a medium or a large. There's two basic head shapes with camelids. You have a head shape that's like this, and then there's one that's more like this. If you have a head shape that's more wedge-shaped, you may need a bigger halter than you think you do uh, because you need that room in the nose, in the nose, and even though the face looks kind of petite and cute from the front, it's actually bigger from the side. Um, and I recommend that you don't put halters on animals and connect a lead to them until they are at least four months old, ideally five to six months old, unless you have a compelling reason to have to halter them. At four months old, I suggest you wait. They're, they're more mature, their heads are bigger, you can fit a halter that's both safe and comfortable, and um, they're not uh, as apt to get overwhelmed and lay down. So when it comes to llamas, I have four sizes, um, a small, a medium, a large, and an extra large. I've just come out with an extra large because you guys are growing very big llamas out there and uh, uh, we needed extra larges for these big um, plus size trail guys. And again, with, with llamas, even though they have bigger heads, I still recommend that you wait until four to five months old to, um, to put a halter on them. Uh, I wrote The Camelid Companion. There's a whole bunch of ideas in there about how to lead train animals, uh, a way to get these halters on so that the animals um, don't uh, have an, a negative feeling about them. And then I have lots of other ideas about trimming toenails and that sort of thing. So thank you for listening. And uh, if, I hope that I've answered your questions about the, the Zephyr halter and why you should really pay attention to uh, which halter you're using and how you fit it. Thanks. So I thought I would finish up with a little bit of practical stuff and let you see me putting a halter on an animal. And I would also like to, um, to say that there's a whole lot more uh, to consider about halters and haltering. And to that end, I have made a longer video that you're welcome to look at. And the very last thing you'll see as this is um, winding down is a link to that particular video on Vimeo. And I hope that this will help you um, have a safer, more productive relationship with your llamas and alpacas and for them, for you to enjoy them and just as important that they will enjoy you more once you consider halter fit.